Why did Boeing's Starliner fall so hard and so fast? Some people blame bad workmanship. But Elon Musk says the truth runs deeper. The real problem isn't the engineers, it's the system. A system built to reward, delay, not progress. One that lets Boeing drain NASA's budget while holding its best engineers back. And here's the shocking part, NASA allows it. Even after nearly a decade of delays, missed launches, and near disasters, Boeing keeps getting more money and more time. Meanwhile, SpaceX gets hammered for every tiny setback, even while breaking records. This is the story of America's broken spaceflight system, and the company that refused to play by its rules. Welcome to TechMap. In the summer of 2024, the world tuned in to witness what was supposed to be Boeing's big moment, the Starliner's long-awaited crewed mission to the International Space Station. It was meant to be a celebration, a long overdue success story. But instead of victory, it became a lesson in how even the biggest names can stumble. What should have been a triumphant return turned into a string of delays, technical setbacks, and stranded astronauts. The Boeing Starliner, officially known as the CST-100, was Boeing's bold entry into NASA's commercial crew program. The idea was simple, but ambitious build a spacecraft that could replace the retired space shuttle and provide a reliable way to transport astronauts and cargo to the ISS. And honestly, Boeing seemed like the perfect fit. They'd worked with NASA for decades from building the legendary Saturn V rocket to developing parts of the space shuttle. With that kind of track record, who wouldn't bet on them? Then came SpaceX. Back then, few people believed the newcomer could seriously compete with Boeing. Compared to the aerospace giant, SpaceX was small, unproven, and still fighting for credibility. But here's where everything flipped. SpaceX didn't just catch up, they overtook everyone. They became the first and so far the only U.S. private company capable of sending astronauts safely to the ISS. That success changed the game and raised a tough question. How could a company with Boeing's experience fall behind so badly? To understand that you have to look deeper. The real issue isn't just technical, it's money. As Elon Musk put it, there are good engineers at Boeing and Lockheed, but we have to get rid of the cost plus contracting system that incentivizes maximizing costs. Elon Musk has often pointed out that Boeing's engineers are talented and capable, and he's right. This is a company that has had its footprint since the dawn of space exploration. So if the engineers aren't the problem, what is? The real issue lies higher up with the management. Over the years, Boeing's leadership has shifted from people who truly understood the nuts and bolts of aerospace engineering to executives who only speak the language of profit and loss. They know how to stretch a contract for maximum gain, but often have no idea how the hardware actually works. A major turning point came in 1997, when Boeing merged with McDonnell Douglas. That merger completely changed the company's DNA. The old Boeing culture built around engineering excellence and innovation was replaced by a corporate mindset focused on shareholder value, financial targets, and cost-cutting. It's no coincidence that this shift coincided with a decline in Boeing's technical edge and an increase in project delays and safety issues. And what's the big prize that keeps this system going? The cost plus contract. This type of agreement, which was common in NASA's earlier years, sounds great on paper, but has a major flaw. Picture this. You ask a friend to build a model rocket and tell them, spend whatever you want, I'll cover it. Naturally, there's no real incentive to stay on budget. The more they spend, the more they earn. That's essentially how cost plus contracts work. NASA has used this model for decades with major contractors like Boeing and Lockheed Martin, but it's a system ripe for inefficiency. Since around 2012 to 2014, Boeing's work on the Space Launch System and the Exploration Upper Stage 
has been plagued by massive delays original timelines slipping by five to six years or more, while costs ballooned into the tens of billions. Boeing ultimately got what it wanted money, and plenty of it. But the question is, what did NASA and the taxpayers actually get for that money? The comfort of a cost-plus contract made things too easy. When you're guaranteed payment, no matter how long a project takes or how much it costs, there's little motivation to chase innovation or perfection. The focus shifts from building the best product possible to simply keeping the project alive because more time means more money. Over time, that comfort eroded the culture of craftsmanship that once defined Boeing's engineering teams. When there's no urgency to deliver or improve quality and passion start to fade. That's exactly what happened with the Starliner program. NASA astronauts who worked closely with both Boeing and SpaceX noticed a clear difference. According to astronauts Doug Hurley and Bob Bainkin, Boeing's engineers often dismissed feedback, while SpaceX's team actively sought it out and treated astronauts as partners in the process. That openness at SpaceX built trust and collaboration. Boeing's resistance did the opposite. Some astronauts reportedly became so uneasy with Starliner's safety issues that they refused to fly on it altogether. But the problems didn't stop there. Inside Boeing, poor communication made things even worse. Design engineering and testing teams worked in silos rarely sharing feedback across departments. Think of it like three people building a complex machine. One designs it, another assembles it, and a third tests it. But none of them actually talk to each other. Everything seems fine on paper until the moment it's all put together and doesn't work the way it should. That's exactly what happened with Starliner's software. Engineers tested small pieces of the system separately, like the launch sequence, but never ran a full end-to-end -end test of the entire mission timeline. So when the spacecraft launched a simple timing error, went unnoticed, the onboard clock was off, and Starliner thought it had already completed a crucial engine burn that it hadn't actually done. The result, the spacecraft ended up in the wrong orbit, unable to reach the ISS. To make matters worse, Boeing often relied on simulated parts instead of real hardware during testing. That might save time on paper, but it hides real-world problems. For example, one emulator failed to reveal a thruster mapping issue that could have caused the service module to collide with the crew module during re-entry. These are the kinds of mistakes that should never make it past ground testing, yet they did simply because the systems were never tested together under realistic conditions. So what's the fix for all of this? Should Boeing tear everything down and rebuild its culture from the ground up. That might sound ideal, but let's be real, that's massive. Elon Musk has suggested something much simpler, yet far more effective. Get rid of the cost plus contract. By eliminating that safety net, you remove the comfort zone that rewards inefficiency and force everyone, especially the engineers, to focus on results again. It's not about punishing people. It's about creating the right kind of pressure that drives innovation instead of complacency. SpaceX learned this lesson early on, mostly out of necessity. When they entered NASA's commercial crew program, they didn't get the luxury of a cost-plus deal. They operated under a fixed price contract, meaning they agreed to deliver a working spacecraft within a set budget. Think of it like saying, Here's $50 to build that model rocket, no extra cash, no excuses. That kind of deal makes you work smart, test smarter, and keep things lean. That experience shaped SpaceX's entire mindset. The tight budgets and strict deadlines during Crew Dragon's development taught them how to simplify designs, test early, fix fast, and never let problems sit around until the end. It's a survival skill that turned into a philosophy. That same spirit fuels everything they do today. SpaceX builds prototypes, 
Fast tests, them, fails learns and improves over and over again. You can see that clearly with the Starship program. Each explosion isn't a disaster. It's data feeding into the next better version. They also use agile project management, something more common in software development, where small cross-functional teams communicate directly instead of getting lost in corporate hierarchies. It keeps design, engineering, and testing connected in real time. You can see this in action with the Starlink project, where they rapidly deploy and upgrade satellites based on live data and customer feedback. Another smart move, SpaceX keeps most of its critical processes in-house. That means faster decisions and tighter quality control. A perfect example was their acquisition of parachute manufacturer Pioneer Aerospace when its parent company went bankrupt. Instead of risking delays, SpaceX brought it under their own roof to secure the supply chain. They also work in short cycles or sprints just like software teams. Problems get spotted and fixed before they snowball. And most importantly, they stay laser-focused on what actually matters. Every design decision starts with one question. What's truly essential for this spacecraft to fly safely and effectively? Anything unnecessary gets cut. This obsession with simplicity makes testing faster repairs, easier, and the whole system more reliable. That mindset, constant iteration, open communication, simplicity, and ownership is SpaceX's secret sauce. It's what allows them to move at a pace the old aerospace giants can't match. And honestly, companies like Boeing could absolutely learn from this. But sometimes even the best internal changes aren't enough. For real progress to happen, the system around a company has to change too. And that's where NASA comes in. It's no coincidence that the Starliner program has survived despite years of setbacks and failures. Boeing's political connections and deep ties to Washington have played a huge role in keeping the program alive. Every year, Boeing spends millions lobbying the government, and that influence pays off. It gives them the kind of safety net that smaller companies could only dream of. NASA, for its part, has always trusted. When the commercial crew program began, NASA naturally leaned toward the company it had known for decades. That trust translated into more funding and more patience. But patience has its limits, or at least it should. Boeing has missed deadline after deadline, stretching what was supposed to be a short project into almost a decade-long saga. Its spacecraft even narrowly killed the astronauts last summer. Yet NASA still hasn't canceled the contract. They continue to defend the partnership publicly, insisting that Boeing can still deliver. It's hard not to notice the double standard. When SpaceX's Starship human landing system fell behind schedule, NASA didn't hesitate to open up the bidding process again for Artemis III. They allowed competitors like Blue Origin to step in, hoping that a little competition would speed things up. But with Boeing, the agency has shown remarkable leniency, far more than it's ever shown anyone else. It's a situation that raises tough questions about accountability. If NASA truly wants to inspire innovation and competition, it can't keep rewarding failure just because it's coming from a familiar name. The future of human spaceflight depends on results, not legacy, not politics, and not comfort.